Happy Wednesday. Good morning. I'm back in my outdoor office. One of my favorite mugs. This is um, by my favorite potter, by the way. The little squiggling. I've probably showed you this mug before. Is the Hebrew word shalom. And that word shalom, um, it's a wonderful word. It normally get, gets translated as peace, but it means more than that. It's not just peace. It's completeness. It's wholeness. Uh, so over the last several weeks I've been you know, talking about sort of what made John Wesley tick on um, the essentials of of his thought and um, with well, I guess beginning last week last week we were looking at his concept of the new birth um, I guess that was oh, two weeks ago last week or prevenient grace um and this week with the new birth and then with this week um we're getting right at the very core of what wesley believed um <clears throat> so today we are looking at a justification wesley's concept of justification um if you're familiar with Wesley and thought you've probably heard that he conceived of grace in two different ways prevenient grace that I referred to last week then um, justifying grace the grace of God that justifies us and then in a couple of weeks <clears throat> sanctifying grace it is the grace of God that justifies us so what is justification um so before I get into this, justification is a term you find it in the New Testament and depending upon what your your denominational tradition is, um, it might in, in the particulars it might be fleshed out slightly differently. Um, but at rock bottom, there's not a lot of difference across denominations about what justification is. And what I'm going to give you is basically just drawn right from one of his most famous sermons. One of Wesley's most famous sermons is justification by faith. And what I'm going to give you is sort of just drawn right from that. So what is justification? Justification is simply forgiveness of sins. It is forgiveness of our sins. Um, justification is not us being made righteous. It's us being declared righteous. Um, and there's a difference. When we're justified, we're not actually made righteous, but we're declared to be. Um, it's simply a decree from God that we're forgiven. And we're made right and this comes entirely through the work of Christ entirely through the work of Christ um, entirely a matter of uh, Christ's sacrifice for us Wesley used the term propitiation which that comes right out of um, Romans chapter 3 Jesus Christ death his blood was a propitiation on our behalf a sacrifice for us <clears throat> so justification is simply our forgiveness or god forgiving us it is us being forgiven by god us being declared righteous even though we are not <clears throat> so the next thing and again i'm just following along if you were to outline wesley's sermon the next thing is um who is justified who needs to be well, who needs to be justified who needs to be made right with god that is the ungodly the ungodly need to be made right with god and who is the ungodly well that's all of us um and that takes us back to original sin doesn't it 
All of us need to be made right with God. <clears throat> um, it is the ungodly that need to be made God-like, that need to be forgiven. It's, as Jesus <clears throat> said, it's, it is the sick who need a physician, not the healthy. Um, in, in looking at our salvation, in looking at our salvation, um, and there's this is really important we are declared to be righteous before we are made righteous we are we are declared righteous before we're made righteous when God justifies us it is always and it must be a matter of grace so anything that we do beforehand, before we're made right with God, anything we do before that is sort of irrelevant. It's totally irrelevant. Um, the only thing that matters in terms of our justification is God's grace. And that is and that comes to us through the blood of Jesus Christ. Like I said, justification precedes sanctification. We are declared righteous before we're made righteous. So in what terms are we justified? So what is, justific what is justification? We refer to that. Who needs to be justified? Now, on what terms? And the terms are faith alone. I'm going to wait a minute while this big truck goes by. given for sins um, and that is made possible by Christ's death and resurrection the second thing who needs to be justified well that's the ungodly which is well all of us um, and then the last thing what are the terms for it by faith alone it is simply by faith and at this point, Wesley um, refers us back to the definition of faith that sort of we get in Hebrews. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. Faith. Faith. It is the faith that God in Jesus Christ is reconciling the world to himself. Um, it's also faith that Christ's death and resurrection reconciled me. This is personal. At this point, it's personal. Um, 
this, and this is going to be really important with Wesley. Um, faith is not simply believing that Jesus is the Savior of the world, but it is believing that Jesus is my Savior, that Jesus died for me. Jesus didn't, yes, Jesus died for the sins of the world, but knowing that Jesus died for me. Um, and for Wesley, there is no justification apart from this faith. Um, and that should be pretty much standard Protestant doctrine, no matter what, um, no matter what denominational background you come from. Justification is by faith, made possible by God's grace. That's standard Protestant doctrine. Apart from faith, there's no justification. Um, to be justified. be justified is to look to Christ in faith. It is to recognize the blood of the new covenant. Um, that's what it is. <clears throat> that's what it is. Justification is simply being forgiven by God. That is a decree from God. It is not something we do. We do not justify ourselves. We simply believe and as a matter of grace, as a gift, God forgives us when we come to faith. Um, so one thing that is worth mentioning here, sometimes I think people mm, subsume all of salvation into being justified. Um, when we talk about justification and salvation like they're synonymous, and that's not really an accurate way to look at it. Justification is part of salvation, but it's not all of it. Um, the justification is instantaneous. Either God has done it for you or he hasn't. Um, justification is a moment. And we may not know exactly when that takes place. And that's okay. But it is an act of God to forgive us, to declare us righteous even though we are not. Um, so justification is a moment. It's instantaneous. Um, it's like the old saying, either you are or you're not. A woman either is pregnant or she's not. But, on the other hand, you can look at salvation, broader salvation, as being a process. Um, and that's, and we'll get to that in a couple of weeks when we look at the next portion of his next, con next portion of salvation as he conceived it, and that is sanctification. Um, so our justification is simply a decree from God that we are not guilty. It is us being forgiven. And that it happens only as a matter of faith. Only by faith. And faith for Wesley is, it is the knowledge, it is the belief that Jesus died for our sins. He's my Savior. Not just the Savior of the world at large, but me personally, you personally, um, and how is how is salvation at the same time progressive? How is it both a moment in time and also progressive? Um, we'll get into that in two weeks. So, one thing that I'll one more now I'll introduce you to an analogy. You may have heard of it before. Um, and it's used sometimes in reference to um, how Wesley understood salvation. Um, it's the analogy of a house. So <clears throat> imagine this. You are lost in the woods. You're 
deep in the woods and you're lost um, and you're cold and hungry and you come upon a cabin and you're curious about what's going on in the cabin, who's in there, and you step up onto the front porch of the cabin. And up on the front porch of the cabin, you can smell, you can smell food coming, food cooking inside. You can smell the warm fire in the fireplace. And remember, you're cold and hungry. Now, getting up to the front porch of the cabin is analogous to prevenient grace. That is analogous to prevenient grace. Um, when the door is opened and you step into the cabin, stepping into the cabin and entering it is justification. You've walked into the cabin. That's justification. You're you're either in the cabin or not. And what happens after you're in the cabin is sanctification. And like I said, I'll I'll describe that in a couple of weeks. But for now, know this: the great good news is that we are justified by faith in Jesus Christ as a matter of God's grace as a matter of God's grace we who are guilty are declared not guilty that is grace that happens only by faith not just a generic faith that there is a God somewhere that Jesus is important but no, that Jesus died for me that by his death and resurrection I am made whole. So that is some wonderful good news on a Wednesday morning. Have a great day.